he makes himself a sandwich and then he microwaves said sandwich for, I'm going to say, eight and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. Narrating it to himself the entire time. Like, I'm going to push the button, I'm going to push that button, and now I'm going to wait. His sandwich is a slice of roast beef on dry bread. You cannot microwave bread. <laughs> when he takes it out of the microwave, it will doubtless be on fire. Exploded. <laughs> <laughs> when the microwave dings later on, you can tell he was just like high as fuck and went, did I do that? <laughs> Shit. Oh, no. How long has that been in there? Did I ding again? Oh, oh. <laughs> movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the one and only Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going, buddy? Fantastic, Heath. I've got my fedora, my whip, and I'm ready to explore. Okay. I don't know what that means different than normal, but okay, let's do it. And we also have veteran guest masochists back by very popular demand, Katie and Alan of the Werewolf Ambulance Podcast. Katie, Alan, welcome back. Hi, guys. Thanks for having us. Fantastic to have you again. So let's get right into it. Katie, what? Are we going to call it a movie? Let's call it a movie. What <laughs> oh, movie? it's a fucking movie. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a, a film. It's a cinema piece of something. What are we going to be breaking down today? We watched Matthew 18. It's a baffling series of ideas shaped into the loose format of a film. Uh, including <laughs> science versus faith, the dangers of moving to the Midwest, and property disputes. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if we'd seen any of the other previous 17 films in the franchise, we'd have a better idea of what's going on. Wait, there are other films in this franchise? It's Matthew 18. Yeah, it's the 18th of the... Oh, okay, there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is an excellent joke, and I I stepped on it with my <sighs> ignorance. I apologize. No, it's, It'd be so it good weak. if there were 17 more I've, Matthew That's movies, the thing, though. is I was like, oh my God, is there a Lifton backstory? Because I was going to vomit <laughs> with excitement. <laughs> Would watch his movie all day I was going to spit up like a nine-month-old. <laughs> Lifton is a great character. We'll get to it. So, um, Alan... Both of y'all actually are quite versed in the horror universe. You've seen hundreds and hundreds of horror movies, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. I'm all out of your mm -hmm. shows. You need to make more content. So <laughs> where does this movie thing fall on your scale of horror movies? Like what's before and after it on your scale? So before it, as with all movies, is the magnum opus of Glenn Danzig, the film Veronica. Incredible, <laughs> incredible movie. The French accents in this movie do nothing compared to what Danzig thinks accents are. Yeah. Okay, would we say there was French in this movie or the noise is near French? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I know this is slightly inside baseball because we've only sort of hinted at this, but Heath and I have traveled through France a couple I of hate times. This. I hate this, what you're and doing. I, I hate this. I am awful at French. And what God. I do in front of him on a regular basis is I this just is abusive. speak English with a French accent. <laughs> and the French people, because it's poor social rules to be like, hey, did you just speak English with a French accent? We'll pretend I just spoke French. That's the French in this film. <laughs> yeah. But then I speak French and I, I'm not great at it, but I took it in school and I have some French and I'll try something and they have no idea what I'm saying every time as if Eli has set up right. some sort of prank ahead of time. And I'm like, please, Heath, allow me. <laughs> Won't she sandwich? Si and they understand. <laughs> and they're like, oh, of course. But I say something and they're like, it's actually plus que parfait is what you were looking for. So we didn't understand a word you, you just said. You fucking idiot. You rude piece of shit. Marry your third grade teacher like the president. <laughs> <laughs> At any point, do you say anal sex? My speciality. My speciality. He usually does. That's a line that Glenn Danzig wrote down for the film. Yeah, it's, it's okay. incredible. Okay, so the Danzig movie is before yeah. this one. What's after? Uh, nothing. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's> a, <laughs> good answer. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of which, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the titillation of a bee haunted house movie, but you wish it was made by people who think short sleeves are the devil's telescope to your sin bags, <laughs> you will love this movie. This is like Tyler Perry going back and forth between writing one of his movies and this movie while his grandmother is watching the movie. Yeah. It's fucking bananas. So like a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah, Got like it. a yeah. Tyler Perry movie. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. Big Mama's House Arrest. <laughs> All right. And is there anything 
Y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at. I'd like to nominate it for having the best worst plot twist. Fuck which, yes, it is. <laughs> which one? To. Which possible <laughs> which, one? Which plot are you referring to? I kind of reject the, <laughs> the premise of that. For unto whomst plot twist. <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan thing at the end that they decided to do where you just sit there with your mouth open. Yeah. Just like three times at the end, they were like, I don't know. Is it ambiguous enough for it to be art? No, we'll do seven <laughs> more nonsense three second twists. Yeah, none of it made any sense. Trying for art so hard in this movie. Yeah. I, I will also say that the final like twist or pop scare or whatever they were going for, we'll get to it when we talk about it, is the hardest I have laughed in six months. <laughs> it's the hard, I laughed so hard. And the I, airplane, yeah, the airplane, yeah. I, yeah, I laughed we'll so it. hard, I could not stop. <laughs> <laughs> I feared for my safety. <laughs> I would like to nominate this for the best worst explanation of the rules of solitaire. Fuck yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. That's Auntie, what, what's her, Donna? Aunt Jessie. Aunt Jessie. Aunt Jessie alone is gun. worth it. Like, I know sometimes where we watch bad movies so you don't have to is kind of the, you absolutely should watch that. You should never stop watching this movie. You should have this movie <laughs> on at all times in all places for Aunt Jessie alone. Yeah. yeah. If you ever need to get information out of somebody, this movie is great to have on all the time. Call Aunt Jessie and she will riff at them until they spill. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to go with best worst, not starting the fucking movie ever. It's what, like an hour and 40 minutes of movie? Yeah. They don't start a movie. They fake at it a few times, but they don't even fake at it for like an hour. Then they fake at it for like 15 minutes. And then they sort of start a movie with like 10 minutes left. And try to do nine endings and nothing makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the alternator was shot on the movie. Yeah. <laughs> they just could not get it to turn over. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to take the easy one here. I'm going to go with best, best Lifton. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm yes. going to say. Ooh. Lifton is the greatest thing in this or maybe any movie. Liffy lifts. Yeah. Yeah. I need Lifton in every film ever. I need him digital. You know how the George Lucas tries to fix his bad movies by like putting in tauntauns oh. in the background and shit. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. need digitally inserted Lifton into every single film. He's like the opposite of Jar Jar Binks. So. I was shipping Lifton and Aunt Jessie so hard. <laughs> so before we get to that, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back to tell you all about Matthew 18. Lifton and Lifton. And you're sure. Tell her you won't be mad. Because because I won't be mad. Um, Eli, Heath, are you ready? Yeah, we're all set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just checking something real quick. Like what? Right. Um, so you know how this movie is about a kid who goes to college and that turns out to be a mistake because the outside world is full of sins and ghosts and stuff. Sure. Yeah. So we're just checking that Eli's mom didn't write the movie. Makes sense. Uh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you double best friend promise. She double best friend promises. I still don't believe her. Me neither. All right. What about now? No, this box is just loose screws. Oh, come on. Hey, guys, what you doing? Yeah. Sorry, guys. Heath and I ordered some headphones on sale from that shop on a social media website, and they turned out to be total junk. Yeah, which is crazy because the person who told us about it promised they weren't gatekeeping. Weren't gatekeeping, I know. Yeah. Guys, if you want great audio at affordable prices, you should try Raycon. What's Raycon? Uh, Alan, we're on this side of the ad. I, I wanted the point. Right, sure. Raycons offer amazing quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. My Raycons come with me everywhere so I can listen at any time. With eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, I don't have to worry about whether they're up for the task. Wow, that's a long battery. It sure is. And they come with noise isolation, earbud tap functions, and awareness mode too. Man, those other brands charge you hundreds more for half those features. They sure do. Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 20% off your Raycon order, plus free shipping. That's right. You'll get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash gam. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, guys. Thanks. So they just sent you a box of screws? I mean, there was a note asking for help in here, too. Ah, bummer. Yeah. Ugh. Bummer. And we're back. And we're going to start with an old-timey, I think, southern-looking lawyer coming in hot through the front door of a church. And he sits down right next to some other guy, and he says, we need to pray. 
Yeah. This will come back in. This movie is an hour and 41 minutes long. This will come back in an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> so uh, just keep in mind that a guy sat down next to another guy and said, we need to pray. Just hold that in your brain. Yeah, exactly. For the next. Just, just keep holding that in your consciousness. <laughs> Speaking of things that won't matter until the last 14 seconds of the movie, now we're going to cut over to some Russian women having some tea. These actresses took a whole year of Russian lessons and they were going to show them off, damn it. <laughs> the sun is so bright. In Russian. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing Russian people say. The way that they have, I mean, we see it again later with the French, but the way that they have chosen, I mean, everyone talks like a fucking chat GPT in the middle of a bad divorce. But at the same time, <laughs> the way they have chosen all of these so-called foreign language speakers to speak is like they're trying to cue us as an outside force that they don't actually speak this language. At one point I wrote during this scene, are they bragging witches? They're supposed to be talking about the weather, but they're like, today we have made the wind go away. Ha <laughs> ha, the wind is gone for sure. <laughs> right, I, that's what I, I assumed they were supposed to be like, Casting the spell that set all of this in motion. Yeah. Whatever is to come. That would have been a movie to do starting now. A what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that honestly would have made this whole movie make a bit more sense. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. These mm -hmm. determined yet humble women. <laughs> but they hear a noise from off screen. And so one of them goes to check it out. We see a little girl prancing around next to a goat. Okay, I know that this won't get called back for an hour and 40 minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is Angelica anybody? So I got all fucked up on this this morning, watching <laughs> yeah. the end of this movie, because we're told later that this is 1936. Right. Mm -hmm. Which would make Angelica like 80. Right. Is, so, is Angelica the little girl? Yeah, yes. with the goat. Angelica's the little girl here, and the movie's going to claim... There's an Angelica later, maybe just somebody with the same name. That's okay. So that's what I was confused about because again, we'll talk about it when we get to the end. Just spoilers. I don't want to ruin Kate's best worst, of course. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I think later on the movie will tell us a character who is not 170,000 years old is Angelica. It's like Chekhov's gun, but like a different, it's like Anthony Chekhov. <laughs> shows up later. <laughs> right. Like we saw a musket and then later there's a machine gun and they're like, huh? Chekhov's gun. See? We did Please. it. It's Tony Chekhov. All <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> My friends call me Tony C. But yeah, so she goes down to hear the noise. Something comes and kills her. Then her sister goes to look for her and then something kills her and that's the... St and then we get the title drop. Oh, that's her sister. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. I thought this was commentary on Angelica having two moms. Ooh. A little homophobic. <laughs> Phobia. Well, uh, it's a Christian movie. <laughs> yeah, and, and they will employ us with some homophobia. They'll, they'll get some more homophobia later. Yeah. yeah, we get quite a bit of homophobia later in the film. So we get some <laughs> spooky pictures. Don't worry, those will never matter. Well, it's just pictures of it's just pictures of black people with blood spattering on them. And I was like, what have you gotten us into? <laughs> yeah. Psychos. But okay, there was a clue here. Oh. There's a blurry like demon face on one person in every shot. Yeah. yeah real creepy pasta oh, style. Oh, I didn't notice that. I will say though that I was very uncomfortable with using old timey photos of people of color for the spooky photo effect. Like I get it. This movie was just trying to do like old photos are creepy. Welcome to our movie. But like, when you're looking at old photos of people of color, they weren't having an amazing time. So spattering them with VFX blood feels a lot more intentional than when you do it with old photos of white people. Yes. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're going to cut to our main character. This is Lauren? Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is Michelle, and she's listening to her R&B when her mom comes to talk to her about all the schools that she got into. What song is she bobbing along to? Because it's not the one we're hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she's like, I only bob on the, and uh, I don't hit an actual. <laughs> boom, bop, 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 boom. I it's feel weird. like somebody in charge of this soundtrack had to pick like, R&B about demons. And they were like, I don't know what the fuck that means. Okay, <laughs> here you go. Something. <laughs> She also has a foot tattoo of Tinkerbell, which really depresses me. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Why? But why? <laughs> Tinkerbell is a bad character. That's official. Yes. What? Tinkerbell sucks. Tinkerbell is an evil character, a kidnapper in that story. I, I do Tinkerbell not. Tinkerbell sells everyone out. 
I don't think you guys are appreciating Tinkerbell the way I'm appreciating Tinkerbell. <laughs> no, we're not. And yeah, I think that's no. a good thing. And if you turn off Safe Search, you too will learn <laughs> okay. to love Tinkerbell. That's all I'm saying. I was going to say we're going to be surprised by an Eli Tinkerbell tattoo, but we've seen enough of Eli that there's no surprises. Left. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Tinkerbell's between the cheeks in my case. Between what a lovely trips. surprise oh, for your wife. Bill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so mom comes in. They're talking about all the colleges she got into. She wants to go to one in Minnesota, but mom is not too sold on her leaving the state or or even the house. It seems. <laughs> is the is the her acceptance to Georgetown? Is that an exorcist nod? Ooh, Since the Exorcist takes place in I Georgetown. love that. Sure is. I didn't catch that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I like that. But mom actually has some good news on that front for, for, for the plot, which is that it turns out that in exactly the city she wants to go to school to, her great-grandfather inherited some property in that town, and she can live there. She just has to pay the utilities. Wow. That's mm -hmm. good. Are, there, mm -hmm. are there any... Like demons in the house, or is it just a regular house? <laughs> uh, so nobody knows at this point in the okay. I don't even know why I asked that. Oh, no, no, cool. House. Got it. Yeah. Why would you bring that up? <laughs> I was expecting a spooky foreshadowing here. We do not get one. So uh, no. there, there you have it. Other than your grandfather inherited a timeshare. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't afford not to get in this. And then they bring out this like tiny baby child who is in this one scene and is so uncomfortable <laughs> to be in the scene, like looking sideways at all of the other actors. Why? Why would they do this to this child? Unclear. I think her dad was like a Kickstarter backer and they were like, we'll put your daughter in the movie. He was like, great. The beginning of her acting career. Very generous of you to refer to these people as actors. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Victims of the camera is a better term. <laughs> So now we head over to the hospital. Good We're going to check on Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa will never matter to the movie. Grandpa will never have anything to do with the movie. He will just, and please correct me if I'm wrong, die when things get spooky? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. he's, a, he's, he's basically the bird that flies into your house. Exactly. Yeah. Well, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Grandpa the fucking weather vane, we introduce him here. I, I, and that's it. We just introduce him as a thing. Uh -huh. This is also when we learn that Michelle is a 17-year-old all the way doctor somehow. The movie right. seems to think that like, if you're planning to go to a pre-med program when you're 17 and leaving high school, you are a doctor who knows everything about science. Yeah, you can just order doctors around when you get into hospital rooms. Yeah. Which I'm sure medical professionals absolutely love, by the way. Uh, oh. Approval all the way. Yeah, for sure. So now we cut over to her graduation party. And I want to point out, and there will be specific things that we should talk about here, but for the next, I'm going to say 50 minutes of the movie, there will be different scenes, but this character, Michelle, will have the exact same conversation with a <sighs> different person in every single variant scene. It's so stupid. The whole point, they're trying to set up the Christian thing here, right? So Michelle's at the party for her going to, to college thing, and all her family is very Christian, but she is a 17-year-old doctor of atheism science, and she's not having it. So she walks in, and her mom or her aunt is like, okay, Michelle's here. Everybody say a quip about science being stupid. Everybody yes. go. Everyone ontologically <laughs> posit, but from a Christian perspective, so that my daughter can answer from what we think a skeptical perspective is, but is actually just someone trying to fake a doctor's note from their mom. All right, who wins in a fight? A doctor, brown, brown nerd, or a god of the universe? <laughs> she says things like, if you're sick, go to the doctor. And I I like felt like I needed some clarification there because I think I'm not supposed to like her because she's breaking her poor Christian mom's heart by moving to Minnesota. So like, does the movie mean that if you're sick, you should go see a doctor or is it mocking that concept? No, I think the movie is supposed to be like, I think we're supposed to be like shaking our heads back and forth like, oh, how little you know, you stupid young harlot. <laughs> also, when she suggests that the earth is round. Yeah. 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 She doesn't suggest like, that the earth is round. <laughs> is it though? I do have to talk about the PA and her journey. So... Let me explain what's happening. They're they're all volu everyone's shouting truisms at the the main character and she's saying like go to a doctor or, or look at evidence or whatever. At one point, it is very obvious that the people of color who star in this movie forgot to say a line. So one of the PAs, who is a white woman, yells 
a line that got missed, right? Very clearly, you can hear it is from a person who is not mic'd, who is not on camera, is just like, well, you better end up at school. And again, he's like, <laughs> it's very clearly a white person's voice. Later in the scene, and this is where I need you to hold me in the light, okay? This is where I'm going to be radically vulnerable and open. Later in the scene, the white PA does that again, but she very clearly does it in a black voice because they were like, hey, oh, no. Katie, everyone could tell that you were the only white lady in the room just now. There are no white people on camera. You need to do a voice. So then later on in the scene, she does another voice, but it's like, maybe we shouldn't have believed that the earth was flat. And you see all the actors. Again, I just have to clarify. You see all the actors look off camera at the very clearly white PA who has just done a black voice and then the movie just moves on. <laughs> yes, all the other actors look like they're going to kick the shit out of Michelle, but I think they just wanted to kick the shit out of that PA. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I, the camera might as well spin around to someone in a headset and be like, what the fuck did you just do? And she's like, nothing. I was just, you, um, you told me. Someone mentioned I should do. All right, everything on cards from now on. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. Also, Katie, I'm sorry Eli made the racist PA your name. <laughs> not racist. Now, not racist. About? She's doing her best. I feel like, and look, Katie, I'm going to be radically vulnerable once again. I'm speaking <laughs> from you, my Eli. heart. I yeah. feel like Katie might have done the same thing in the same position. I think if she was told you need to do a voice, she's a team player. She would have piped up with a voice. It would have been weird. It would have gotten awkward and she would have moved forward because she's a pro. Katie, would you like to know and that real quick? <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. Thank I you. also like the idea of saying I'm being vulnerable right before you say a thing that could get you punched. I'm being vulnerable. <laughs> Katie's a racist. Okay, let me just say it from my heart. Let me say it from my heart. If you say I'm being vulnerable, people aren't allowed to get mad at you. I learned that from TikTok. You can't call timeout safe space time out. for your racism. Time out. That's not how that's supposed to work. Time out. I don't like Ethiopian food. Time in. Also, I, from this whole scene, I got the vibe that her mother was going to kill her. Oh, yes. yeah. For sure. Because she just kept saying, when it's your time, it's your time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like dark yeah. and ominous all the time. They also, they kept, like, some of the things they say are, like, folksy things you've heard before. Like, you know, there's good and there's evil. Or the doctor said she was fit as a bird. Although, to be fair, I hadn't heard that, right? And then she died. And then, but, but at one point, apropos of nothing, mom just yells, there are signs when death is chasing you. And I wrote in my notes, okay, take it back a notch. Take it back a notch. <laughs> also, now I want to see an out of shape bird that just has to land and be like, oh, <laughs> fucking flying. God. Oh, God. I'm doing my best. Uh, give me a second. I definitely saw fat pigeons in Philadelphia. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Near Reddington Market, I was one of them. <laughs> All right, so again, it's a new scene. Now it's time for her to have that exact same conversation. She's now going to have the same conversation with her hometown best friend, but first she's going to have an unfortunate interaction with an adorable dog. Fuck this movie. <laughs> okay. Fuck this movie. Let Trying me... to claim that like this dog is evil or demonic. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay, here's what the movie is going for. This is all under protest for the rest yeah, of the show. Correct. Yes, correct. I wrote in my notes, podcast listener, this episode's going to be a little short. Heath is going to have some really ugly things to say about this movie, not liking dogs, and we're we're going to have to cut most of it. That's what I wrote. I was just like, Demon Cujo kills everybody? Great. Good. That's what I'm watching in my head right now. That's awesome. So here's what the movie shows us, all right? We get a shot of an adorable pit bull, right? Who's just like got the friendliest face and the he biggest face. smile. Yeah. And then from off screen, I think it's the white PA again, is doing like a, arr, arr, I'm a big scary dog. Don't do the voice. Don't do the voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Katie Leave managed not to do the voice. out of this. <laughs> <laughs> and they're obviously poking the dog with a stick as well because it keeps looking at the side. Like, I'm so hey, mad. Hey, yes. Hey. They're, they're really going to try and make this dog <laughs> seem scary and they are failing ridiculously at it. They, they actually try for three different pop scares here and they swing and miss really hard. First, they're like, VW Beetle behind her? Is that scary? scary? No. no? Okay. Uh, <laughs> clouds? No, that's nothing. Dog paws. Delightful dog prancy. <laughs> Shit. All right. We'll make the dog demonic. So the dog starts to attack her and she runs into the coffee shop and meets her friend. Where they hold the door closed against the dog, even though we watched her turn a knob to get in. Yeah. And then we see the dog outside and I can't tell if the dog was small or far away, but either way, it was fucking hilarious. It's hilarious. Because also, yeah. the dog isn't like <laughs> 
going, the dog is supposed to be like going at the door, right? It's supposed to be yeah. trying to get after them, but they've just slammed the dog in this adorable dog's face and the dog's like, all right, well, that's rude. <laughs> it looks like the dog is trying to hail a cab. Right, yeah. The dog's <laughs> like, all right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. This isn't a safe space for dogs. It's very obvious. <laughs> So then they're crazy rude to a waitress. I know this is supposed to be spooky. Yes. But this this just waitress is like, hi, can I get you anything? And they're like, fuck off. And, and she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. In, in fairness to them yelling at this waitress, the waitress shows up and there's like a whoosh, like pop scare whoosh noise wherever this person yeah. goes. So they're like, hey, if you're somebody who makes that noise everywhere, you know, come in slow, maybe. Just like, <laughs> so you say something on the way. Well, she had also blown her smoky eye this morning. It just wasn't looking good. I think she was yeah. supposed to look tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were going for like ghostly or scary, but she just looks, you know, like she's working a third shift in a row. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where the best were. So they're like, yeah, no, you're going to make it. You're going to be fine. And this is where the friend, I would say apropos of truly nothing, says, even the dead are real. Wait, I thought no, the, the, the waitress. The, the waitress that's says right. That. The waitress the says, waitress says yeah, even yeah. the dead are real. I don't know. Figure it out. It's <laughs> like yeah. I want to watch this lady's movie. She rules. <laughs> I want to start doing that to people. Sorry, I, I got a lot of fentanyl in my bloodstream. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation that the two women are having too is wild. It's insane. Like, she's like, I've just been under my parents' tutelage and direction, and they have a strong system of beliefs that I respect, but I need to follow my own emerging convictions and principles. <laughs> You're saying yes. a pamphlet. Yes. You're just saying a pamphlet. Mm -hmm. I just want to abandon God and find science, you know, and the best friend has to be like, mm, I'm a little skeptical. I don't know about abandoning God and finding science. And then, whoosh, even the dead are real. What? what? Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> I, I, even in my notes, I wrote, what? What the fuck would that mean? And then the waitress says, figure it out. And I was like, okay, movie, All right. I'll figure you out. Cool. Can I say, as someone who was a server, I missed out on the chance to say mysterious things to people mm -hmm. and then, and then fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> and then say, I did my research. Now you do yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is also where we meet one of my other favorite characters besides Lifton, who we are going to meet soon. We meet old lady who just goes places and does ominous staring. Angry staring black lady. Movie. Yeah, angry yeah. staring black lady. I cannot emphasize to you, podcast listener, how many shots we will get of this woman staring in a white hot rage at the main characters and not once will someone be like, hey, hi, what are you what, doing? What? <laughs> what do you want? Is she real? Is she a real? Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. Real. Oh, she's real. She's, she's real. She's doing all yeah. this shit. Yeah. Okay. All right. One might argue she is the title of the film. <laughs> She's the Jesus right. character of this, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. Someone's got to be. Yeah. So with that out of the way, now it's time for her to head onto the airplane where she's going to be met by a um, mentalism stewardess. <laughs> <laughs> the Sherlock Holmes of air travel. I, I have not flown much in my life. It, it's, yeah, it's whatever. But. Do supermodels go seat to seat and introduce themselves to mm -hmm. people on planes? <laughs> and then they make they make a couple of sort of magician -y slash tarot card reedy <laughs> guesses about your life. And uh, yeah, then they bring you a tapas box later. <laughs> that woman's hair was amazing. A yeah. lot of volume. Strong hair. <laughs> Strong hair. Yeah. I wrote in my notes at this point, why am I watching her do small talk with every possible service member? This is like <laughs> traveling with Heath. <laughs> 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 okay. All I noticed in this scene was that Michelle is in row 13. Ooh. Damn. So, clue or something. All I notice in this scene is that the flight attendant is like, just hit that button there if you need anything, and then turns to walk away, and Michelle reaches up and hits the button so at the good. end of the scene. <laughs> so good. Okay, according to the movie, if Michelle moves to, like, row 12 because there's an extra seat open with the space next to it, that none of this would happen. The demons would be like, Fuck. hard to say, ah, hard to say. Well, that's a good number. I guess that's <laughs> that just a, a normal. Question. Enjoy your trip. <laughs> Check out the mall. <laughs> <laughs> do, do make sure you change. It's fun. It's big. <laughs> it's big. Um, they've got a, a Cinnabon there. <laughs> so now we're going to meet the hero of the film, the hero of all films. I'm talking, of course, about Lifton. If he's on love. Ooh. Fuck. Yes, Lifton will be separate from the movie and in it, much like the Shakespearean clowns. Uh, <laughs> he helps her in with her bags. He informs her that a, an evil white lady lives inside, and then he fucks off. Yeah. 
I just spent the whole scene going, holy shit, that's Big Worm from Friday. Yep. What is happening? It sure right is. Now? <laughs> it sure is Big Worm from Friday. And I bet he spends most of his life being like, actually, it's, and the people are like, no, it's Big Worm from Friday. <laughs> so now we're going to meet evil white lady who is the- Oh my God. Mrs. Hillshire. Mrs. Hillshire. So what, what we are supposed to believe happened is that the family, we're going to eventually learn what actually happened, which is fucking bizarre, but the family inherited this house together- the Hillshires, which this white lady comes from, they run the house and, and benefit from the house. They just own a part of it. Anyways, she's here to be extremely racist to <laughs> Michelle the instant she walks in the door. Oh, I didn't get that. No? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't pick her up? <laughs> she, uh, she says, no destroying the building. And I was like, okay, that's, that's not great. And then she says... I don't want to hear any of that rape music. And I was like, weird way to reference Ma Marilyn Manson, but I get it. I get it. <laughs> but Michelle is like, do you mean rap music? And Mrs. Hillshire says, rape, rap, what's the difference? And I wrote in my notes, the most racist possible thing to say. Yikes. <laughs> I only wish she had like spit 16 bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, of course, you could defeat me in a battle. See, there you go. Better movie. Also, I have a question now because she's paying utilities. Does she have to pay utilities for the whole fucking mansion slash apartment or just like her <laughs> unit in it? Because if she's having to pay it for the whole mansion, that's definitely going to be more than whatever rent would be in Minneapolis. Oh, there's Absolutely. an industrial kitchen in the basement right. of this place. Where she just taps the blade of a Why knife. Does Why does she touch knife? it? Oh my God, they're doing the <laughs> the knife tour. It's so, okay. First of all, you have to understand this is hilarious. It's also me everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. <laughs> You're a toucher. And, and me walking behind being like, don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch, <laughs> don't touch, don't touch the knife. You're going to hurt yourself. Ah, you cut yourself. A NASA guy was once like, hey, do you want to come tour the NASA thing? And one, boo nerd. But two, there was genuinely consensus in our company that I could not go because I was going to Mike Pence. <laughs> you were going to Pence. It. I was going to Mike Pence all <laughs> up on that telescope. <laughs> just, just touching it with a fly on the side of your head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the whole just time. putting all different O rings into it for no reason. Yeah. One other thing I want to talk about when it comes to this kitchen, they're walking through the kitchen and she's like, oh, cool. Kitchen. Can I use the kitchen? And she says, I'd prefer if you asked. And I wanted her so badly to be like, I literally just, just that's did. what can I, I just did. Can I use it? Yeah. I'm sorry. Can I use it? <laughs> I use it now. <laughs> can I use it? <laughs> and just when you thought there could be no better character than Lifton, we are going to be, <laughs> oh. I would say, the second best or best. It's hard to say, right? This is this is a LeBron, it's, Kobe, oh Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson moment, right? They're both great in their own way. Ooh. We're going to meet Aunt <laughs> Debbie. Jesse. Je Jesse. Aunt Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> and she is the fucking best. Now, I will say, I was a little uncomfortable because I, I don't know if you've noticed, podcast listener, but... um. I've grown over the years. I've gotten better. I am a better man than I was, uh, than the comedian who began this podcast. And so I have no jokes about the 11 minutes of chicken conversation these two <laughs> actresses <laughs> of color have. Just me being like, no things to say from me. L listen, I've been vegetarian for like 30 years. So, but as I remember... It makes you vegan for 15. Chicken is fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, in their defense, chicken is fucking delicious. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but baking chicken is the worst way to cook chicken. You don't bake chicken. You have not had Aunt Jessie's chicken. You I haven't had Aunt, Jessie. I, oh, no, Aunt Jessie's right. chicken. Is no one out chicken, sir. Can, can I, Moist. <laughs> real quick. So, at the end of this film, we'll call it. Chikusi. <laughs> we, we get a reveal at the end of this movie. Yeah. That. Aunt Jessie has been dead the entire time. Yes, we fucking How? do, Alan. How? Yes, we fucking do. So think about the fact that this ghost <laughs> is having a conversation about her chicken and how she needs to get railed. Yes. She's <laughs> That's the entire somebody, conversation. She's describing somebody is all dried up. And yeah. I was like, oh, Aunt Jessie fucks. Yes. And then she's like, I'm all dried up too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then she talks about erectile dysfunction and how she was too sexually aggressive with her last boyfriend and it scared his boner away. And my question, again, in retrospect, knowing what we know is, was he like, no, it was honestly more the fact that you're the undead that killed my boner rather than your aggressiveness. Genuinely, genuinely, I hope that this is what my death is like, where I just walk around talking about chicken and dicks. Chicken afterwards. and dicks. 
<laughs> in the canon, are ghosts not at least, you know, fucking each other like other dead ghosts sometimes? I feel like that's the worst part about being a ghost is you're not allowed to fuck another ghost. Oh. Well, yeah, according to all of the uh, Christmas ghosts sex rom-coms I've seen, they're fucking mortals. They're not fucking other ghosts. That's true. That's oh, true. Yeah. you're stuck on Earth like Swayze. Exactly. Exactly. You need a you need a whoopee to be your sex conduit. You need a whoopee. Got it. <laughs> That's my also my nickname for a condom, by the way. A whoopee. Sex conduit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Or a whoopee. I thought, I thought sex conduit. Sex conduit. Sex conduit, yeah. Yeah. Sex conduit yeah. is a whoopee. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Heath, for example, my whoopee. I have often okay. said that. Yeah. <laughs> then I don't know where this metaphor. Go, go ahead. I think we lost it. Let's not explore it. <laughs> so then, oh, we didn't lose it. <laughs> and again, I just have to emphasize that this is a ghost. Gives her an envelope of money. Yeah. And the keys to her car. Did the car get repaired? Is Holy it a shit. Ghost I never car? thought about what who's because the car gets wrecked. I yeah. mean <laughs> Does she at, we never see her drive the car. I guess she never goes to check it out. Well, she <laughs> gives she gives her the uncle's car. She's like, Oh, I'm riding my own car. You can have your uncle's car. So it's not like she's in the oh. car that crashed. But where would she right. have, whom gave her the keys? Was was it a manifest? Like, is it a manifested ghost or should we have a flashback towards the end of the movie of her just talking to herself and then grabbing the uncle uncle's keys off the table? Like, But did her, her parents not know that Aunt Jessie was dead? Yes. How could that be? They were talking. They about send her to go be with Aunt Jessie. And if they knew she was dead, she could have lived in Aunt Jessie's apartment. Uh-huh. And Jesse is secretly dead, according to the movie right now, I yeah. think, right? Also, yeah, yeah. it's a secret no, until four someone. seconds before the credits. Yeah. <laughs> I also just have to point out, later on in the movie, I don't remember when this is, later on in the movie, someone will be talking to the mom and say, oh, you can't trust Aunt Jessie. She drove her car off the road and didn't yes. add and fucking <laughs> died. Yes, they say she's not fit. I, because she's, she's dead. dead. Just going to throw a theory out there. You guys can shoot me down if you want to. Yeah. They didn't know they were going to have Aunt Jessie dead until the scene where someone <laughs> says that she's been dead for three months. That cop just improvised it, right? He was like, this is, this is my chance. No small parts. Your Aunt Jessie has been dead for 50 years. And they were like, what? <laughs> what? Fuck. <laughs> okay. God damn it. What? You know we don't know where the rewind button on this camera is, Go Chris. It. Damn it. <laughs> We'll do nine more endings. It'll make sense. No, it won't. Yeah. More endings in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right. Well, Aunt Jessie talking about that delightful baked chicken made me very hungry. So we're going to need a quick break. And then we'll be back with more Matthew 18. Hey, uh, Beelzebub. Oh, uh, hey there, Mahar. How, how you doing, man? Uh, being a demon. You know, you know how it goes. Well, uh, what are you doing here? I heard you were on assignment in a creepy haunted house. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was, but um, I got banished. Ah, no, banished. You hate to see it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying not to take it personally. You can't, you can't take it personally. It's just part of the job. Part of the job, sure, sure. Yeah, so um, so what happened? All right, you ready for this? Okay. Anointed oils on the wall. No shit. Yep. I hate that. 50 year haunting, three murders down the drain. Just a little oil on the wall. I get it, man. I get it. I had a U.S. senator once for 11 years. The night before the summoning, he throws a little salt over his shoulder right in my eye. Oh my God. I hate it. I hate it so I know, much. I know. It's the worst. It's the worst. Wait, wait, wait. Shh, shh, shh. Here comes Orthogonus. Hey, fellas. Hey. Hey, Orthogonus. Hey. I, I thought you just left. Yep. This morning and then uh, someone sneezed. Ah, fuck. Sorry to hear that. Part of the job. Part of the job. Yep. Okay. I said I was sorry. Not cool, dude. Hey, guys, what's wrong? Oh, Eli sent me pictures of his junk. It was a misunderstanding. What? A misunderstanding? How? Okay, so he was asking me about MeUndies, and I just figured, you know, this is the beginning of him asking about what's underneath. Eli, I was asking about this week's sponsor, MeUndies. What's MeUndies? Nice, you both got one. From all black classics to fun, expressive prints, MeUndies has a look for everyone. Plus, they come in sizes extra small to 4XL, guaranteeing a flattering cut for everybody. Plus, MeUndies' signature fabric is as soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater. It's breathable, stretchy, and oh so comfy, making it ideal for all day wear. Man, those do sound good. Where can I get them? Get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash awful. That's MeUndies.com slash awful for 20% off, plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort 
from the outside in. Wait, hold on. Let me see that picture. Okay, yeah. No, this is just Eli riding a pig at the county fair. Oh, right. I see it. Yeah, Easy it mistake to make. Go to a doctor. You go to a doctor. But, but also you, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to a doctor. And we're back. When we left off, Aunt Jessie was delightful. And now Michelle's mom is on the phone with some judgy Christian lady that she knows to slander the only good character in the movie <laughs> other than Lifton. Yes, this is the scene I was teasing before the break where someone's like, you can't trust Jesse. She drove off the road, which we are now supposed to know means she died that way. <laughs> now, did you guys feel like the person on the other end of the phone who will never come back, by the way, we will never learn who that was. The car- In fact, the scene ends and the husband goes, who is that? And she goes, you know who it is. And I wrote in my notes, I don't no. though. Can I know? I Can I, the audience know? Oh, I have a theory. I think this was angry staring lady. No, because she hasn't met angry staring lady. But they're, I thought maybe they're friends here. Like we don't see them meet in the movie yet, but when they meet later, it seems as though this might've been her on the phone. So a stranger who she doesn't know called her and yelled at her about where her daughter is going to college. <laughs> and then later she doesn't recognize that person at all. But when she walks in the room, she's like, who are you? Well, no, this lady is part of the same church. I think they know each other. They definitely don't know each other. They definitely don't know each other. No, I think that this is the, I think this is, might be like a grandma. I think it might be the mom's mom, the way she's nagging at her. Yeah. Cause she's also like, Michelle needs to get back here and go to seminary school. But like mom was pushing for her to go to church. Georgetown. So yeah, because we'll need to pray about this is exactly the line that staring lady says later. Mm, I think a couple people. I think a lot of a lot of people say that. Yeah, that sweaty man in the first scene says it, too. Yeah, they're also in this phone call, which makes it even more confusing. She says, Claire, we had a plan. We never find out what that plan is. We never find out how Claire deviated from the plan. It makes no sense. None. Right. I think my theory makes it fit all together. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> He's still trying to work your theory into the fucking movie. The, the movie the movie didn't know what it was doing. No. The movie had no idea what was happening. The no. movie was just like, these are words. I'm putting them together. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Either nothing makes sense or everything does. The god awful movie we're, story. We're 35 minutes into this movie and not a thing has happened except that a woman has decided to and then has relocated to the Twin Cities area. Yes. That's and, it. And had yep. some mildly pleasant conversation with friends and family members. Yeah. And a ghost. Yeah. So now Ooh. we're going to have what I would call the inciting incident of the film. She's... Uh, setting up her room, which is very silly because it's like a Victorian mansion and she's putting up like Backstreet Boy posters, <laughs> but she's setting up her room and they have that thing with the pop scare ghost in the mirror. Mm-hmm. But I want to clarify now, I sort of want to plant a flag. She will spend the rest of the movie talking about that. Like it's a weird thing that happened, not the pop scare moment, right? Like she is mildly bothered by the white lady ghost covered in flowers she saw in the movie, but she talks about it like she's going to run into a flower covered neighbor later in the movie. He's going to be like, sorry, I was baking and I, I ran out of baking soda and you know, you got to get that in early. <laughs> You don't get a good rise. Yeah. For the next hour of the movie, she's just going to go around asking people like, hey, is there like a, an old lady who just like walks around mostly uh, across from mirrors and that's it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody's like, I don't think so. But yeah, that's possible. We get that sometimes. You mean like Tyler Perry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she goes upstairs. She finds Lifton. Right. She tells Lifton what happens. He's like, are you on drugs? And she's like, no. And then Lifton, and I love this, and I wish more horror movies carried this forward. Lifton's like, well, look, if I ever see a ghost lady who appears in mirrors, I'll punch her in the fucking face. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good plan. It's It's a great plan. Not enough people. Can I say? Not enough people try to punch a ghost. Like, we don't know enough about ghosts that you shouldn't at least try a punch. Yeah, this is the theory of our show, is that Alan's belief in if there is something scary, you should run at it at full speed. Yeah. Yeah, If that ghost starts coming out of your TV in the ring, just run up and start kicking it in the fucking head. Kicking the head. At the very least, you're ruining its moment, right? At the very least, she's not going to go back and brag to the other ghosts about you, like, (laughs) swearing really loud and kicking it. It's like, yeah, I mean, I am stronger because I'm a demon. It just kind of, I didn't, usually they sit there frozen in horror and Alan just threw a toaster at me and said, fuck (laughs) off. So, I don't know. 
I mean, I killed him. He couldn't run away from me. He's an asthmatic, <laughs> but... <laughs> But I don't know. Something about the fire poker just kind of killed the magic. Hey, stop. Did you throw a toaster? That's nothing. That's I'm a, nothing. That's what nothing. I'm doing a speech. Don't get the you microwave. Didn't accomplish anything. <laughs> so now we're going to cut over to her college's campus. Now, podcast listener, I don't know if we're going to spoil this. I don't think we should because I don't think we should. I think we should save the twist. But I'm just going to yeah. say we have this thing where she meets her college counselor who looks like she's going to turn out to be a ghost for this movie. Uh, she <laughs> won't. It's dumber. <laughs> it is dumber than that. <laughs> but the college counselor is like, yes, we have recruited you for our college. You are the top recruit. And then they talk a little bit. I will tell you, so uh, if I can part the curtain slightly, we use a notation system for our notes where we'll like highlight a text in red when we're like, oh, we can skip this scene. We don't need to talk about it. I highlighted it in red. Then I got to the end of the movie and I was like, okay, I guess I have to introduce the college counselor who she will have a mild conversation with her course load about and nothing else in the rest of the film. Oh, man. Wow. So good. Well, don't forget the college counselor does say, I love that neighborhood and then wistfully looks out the window. Yeah, she <laughs> does. It. I love that neighborhood. She does. Foreshadowing. Yes. Or is it? The weirdest. The number four. <laughs> yeah. Foreshadowing. Number four, yes. Weirdest foreshadowing. All right. So now uh, we're going to meet the best friend. Like one shadow. Good Lord. Yeah, exactly. Tammy. <laughs> this is Annie. Tammy. Ta do they meet through psychic connection? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I, th I thought they met because they were the two black ladies in line. Okay. I also saw that and was very <laughs> uncomfortable with it. But what's happening is she's standing in line and she thinks, man, this is going to take forever. Right? We see her mouth not move. It is very clearly ADR to be a thought. <laughs> and then her friend is like, I know these lines take a really long time. And so my head canon for the rest of the film is that this character is psychic and just doesn't bother to tell anybody. <laughs> that would make sense why she shows up at her apartment later. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Oh this my. movie's tone, though, is just absolutely inscrutable. It's bananas. Like, at at this point, she's talking to Tammy about her future plans. And she's like, "Think I was thinking about law school, but I don't want to be up in this motherfucker that long. And you're like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> this, this is the same movie who earlier had a woman under her parents' tutelage. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it is a very strange balance of like this fucking fuck. And the, the, the best thing about this as like a like college essay that you didn't really mean to write. <laughs> So we're going to cut back to Aunt Jessie now. Aunt Jessie has a series of very problematic figurines. And look, I know that these figurines were probably made by a person of color to celebrate church life, but they could also have been made by a white racist. And so they made me very uncomfortable. Sure. Yeah. Although the, the black couple on the bench, I really liked that yep, one. Yep, that's like, good. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Coming to your address soon, Alan. Go, go, go. <laughs> Hit me with that P.O. box. So Aunt Jessie is playing solitaire here. And she says... I'm playing solitaire, but I don't know how to play. So I wrote in my notes, so you're just moving cards moving around? Cards. What's yep. the fuck happening? She's a ghost, guys. She, she is a ghost. She is a ghost. <laughs> she's a dick-hungry ghost. She's a dick-hungry ghost who seems visibly drunk in the scene. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you in that mind of yours. <laughs> So she tells her about the white lady and she's like, I think it was a homeless person. She's like, no, I don't think she's a homeless person. And then she talks about homeless people like they're cockroaches for a little while, right? She's like, oh, no, you got to get the nest. Otherwise, they just keep coming back. The rules they have for the unhoused in this movie are insane. Yeah, no, they're not great. <laughs> no, they don't go in that neighborhood. They're only over here. This is where they stay. They never move anywhere <laughs> not else. Near the right golf here. course. <laughs> not near a golf course, golf for crying course. out loud. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then... Aunt Debbie, who I cannot emphasize Jessie. enough, Jessie. Aunt Jessie, who I cannot emphasize enough, is a ghost, is like, would you like to use my gun? So again, we have, <laughs> I will punch the ghost in the face and you can fucking shoot a ghost in the face. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, she's going to shoot either ghosts or the homeless, TBD. <laughs> and, and how does she emphasize that she indeed does own a gun? She sings... Aunt Jessie's got a gun. Yeah, she does an Aerosmith parody. She does an Aerosmith oh, parody. Right. Yeah, it's fantastic. From beyond the grave. <laughs> From beyond the Aerosmith. grave, she does an Aerosmith. And then she's like, hey, introduce me to Lifton. 
I think she might not know she's a ghost. Right, because she's talking about fucking the guy from the grocery store. <laughs> okay, well, that's amazing, right? So she's like, oh, make sure you introduce me to Lifton. And she's like, all right, I got to go, Aunt Jessie. And then the camera stays with Aunt Jessie <laughs> while Aunt Jessie talks about how hard she fucks for... A while. I'm not kidding, four minutes. She's like, I'll fuck the shit out of that guy. At the grocery. <laughs> yeah. She's playing solitaire by herself. She is an otherworldly <laughs> spirit. And she's like, you don't even know. I need to ask about your Aunt Jessie. You don't fucking ask around. One of the few wise decisions this director made was like, I've got Lunell and the governor is fucking off. She might have had a few. I'm just going to let her go and keep the camera rolling. Yep, keep the camera, keep the camera, keep the camera <laughs> rolling. Correct. Okay, I, I think it's true, though, that Aunt Jessie doesn't know she's a ghost. Yeah. So if it's like the no Patrick Swayze did. scenario, <laughs> you have to learn that you're a ghost stuck on Earth. At first, you think you're still a person because you're there. Right. Yeah. So she spent the last like three months. Nobody will fucking listen to. Her. She says things and nobody says a word. And she's just like, all right, everybody's a fucking asshole around here in Minneapolis. But <laughs> I guess I'm still here. And she doesn't know she's a ghost yet. In that fiction, do you think the man who's Johnson shriveled up inside of him was the equivalent of the get off my train guy? Yes. But it was get off my dick. Yeah. <laughs> Everything Aunt Jessie touches shrivels. Yeah. Somebody get her a bottle cap. Yeah. This is all coming together. Although she doesn't know how to move the cards around. So maybe she learned the, the physics already. They might be ghost cards. <laughs> the, the ghost cards? The cards died with her in that car crash. <laughs> We're going to cut over to Lifton. I want to say this scene doesn't matter. This is just Lifton's haunting experience. But Lifton is a delight. So I will talk about every scene. He makes himself a sandwich. And then he microwaves said sandwich for, I'm going to say, eight and a half minutes. <laughs> Yeah. narrating it to himself the entire time. Like, I'm going to push the button, I'm going to push that button, and now I'm going to wait. His sandwich is a slice of roast beef on dry bread. You cannot microwave bread. No, like, you like a four-inch slab, one slice of roast beef off a whole side of beef, and then he puts that between two pieces of bread and throws it in the microwave. For so it's long. So weird. For so long. It, when he takes it out of the microwave, it will doubtless be on fire. Exploded. <laughs> <laughs> when the microwave dings later on, you can tell he was just like high as fuck and went, did I do that? <laughs> Shit. Oh no, how long has that been in there? Did I ding again? <laughs> It'll probably come out as a short rib taco. I'm just guessing. If I put it on for like 19 <laughs> minutes, that'll do it, right? <laughs> Comes out, it's just beady. <laughs> but yeah, he goes up to get his sandwich and someone stood the knife up. And the ghost is in the knife. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, you see the reflection of the ghost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> oh, do you? I missed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to How's rewind the it. Ghost is in the knife. Okay. In the knife. How yeah. subtle of this film. It's really hard for me to follow the motivation of the demon throughout most of this. Sure. So right here, some sort of demon who has nothing to do with Lifton. Lifton just like lives in this house. This demon was like, you know what? I'm gonna fuck with this guy too for a second. Knife. All right, that's it. And then just, that's the whole thing. That's yeah. like well, pranks. Well, did anyone live there before the two of them? Because he's only moved in a few weeks ago and we've been told that the place is unrentable. Yeah. It seems odd that the the first two people Mrs. Hillshire rents to are the daughter of the person who co-owns the property and a random man named Lifton. And again, <laughs> I can't emphasize enough, this is not like an apartment building. It's just like a Victorian castle and they're taking like the third dining room and it's just like, yeah, I guess Lifton lives in there. <laughs> yeah. He seems to have a whole wing of the house as well. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's time to get to the parts of the movie that I was just like out and out laughing at. And yes. I'm talking, of course, about the church staring contest. Now, <laughs> he theories aside, the mom and her friend are talking in church right there in a normal church day. They're, you know, gossiping in church. They turn and hooded staring lady, who we mentioned earlier, is just eye fucking her straight on. <laughs> Turned 180 degrees around, <laughs> staring behind her. There is no scenario where you were being looked at like this, where you wouldn't go, hello, is everything okay? <laughs> Everybody sees that lady looking at us, right? Yes. Right there, the only one who's turned around during the sermon. I needed the pastor to be like, hey, sorry, you in the third row. Are you staring at, is everything okay? <laughs> so we have a quick moment where she studies with a friend. This is where we meet. French study girl. Uh, this scene does not matter at all. The only reason I point it out is that later, French study girl. God, I don't even know. 
French study girl will know a witch who is also a twist in the movie. Don't worry. We'll get to it when we get to it. It'll come together. Yeah, exactly. It's all going to come together. So that night, roommate friend and French study friend and also a, a, a couple who are dating each other or are not dating. I don't know. They just say vile things to each other. throughout. Keela the and yeah. Renfro. They have fun they banter. They have, they're oh. not fun banter. I would like to say. <laughs> yeah, by fun, I mean not at all fun. And everybody <laughs> hates the vibes every time they the talk. Worst. They're those people yeah. that argue in front of you and then try to make you pick sides and you just want to be dead. Oh, yes. yes. Dead. Absolutely. You want to be Aunt yeah. Jesse level dead. Wait, guys, can we just go back to head bobbing silently to the hip hop world? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. No, we don't have orgasms either. No, yeah. we're done. We're, we're back now. <laughs> of the room <laughs> so yeah they're they're fighting and bantering and playing cards for jenga blocks which i found very confusing they're like they're playing cards but they're using the jenga blocks as chips or they yeah. have somehow divided up the jenga blocks i it's, think they were just playing jenga at one point and now they're playing cards and now right? they've di- i don't know they've they've divided <laughs> the jenga blocks up around the table after playing jenga <laughs> i was so distracted in this scene because i kept trying to figure out what the names of the fake beers were that they were drinking oh, yeah. one is Pat Light. Mm-hmm. And the other one, I'm pretty sure, is Lowbrow. B R A U. Lowbrow? Yeah, like Come not low and brow. Lowbrow. <laughs> I was, as the resident chubby man, I was distracted because there were three bowls for snacks on the table mm. pretzels, Cheetos, and a completely empty bowl. And I was like, well, what was that snack? Yeah, yeah. I, I was very curious. Was that the Oreos? <laughs> <laughs> what was that snack? That was the cocaine bowl. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that's why nobody's eating the Cheetos or the pretzel snack. Yeah. They're also like mixing bowl size snack bowls with just normal amounts of snack in them. So either they have yeah. absolutely gone to town on a party sized bag of Cheetos or they poured the, those are the only bowls they have. <laughs> so they get to talk again. This movie will have three conversations over and over again until it gets to like one minute before the end of the film. They start to talk about their different superstitions. Many of these I had not heard of. Have you guys Mm-mm. heard of? of anointing your walls to stop thumps in the night. No, it seems flammable. I don't think you should put oil on the walls of your home. Yeah, right. How much anointed oil? Is it the gesture that matters? Can you aerate the oil? Can you put it in one of those like oil, those scented oil burners and it'll just mm. kind of cover the whole house? Get a diffuser. Exactly, a diffuser. Thank you. Yeah. One person brings up this. I had not heard this before. If a bird flies into your house, someone mm. you know is going to die? Yeah, I have heard that before. Oh, you have? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, and and that's true. Yeah. Because every everybody dies. Everybody's going to die. And, yeah, there are birds. Yeah, yeah. and the time dimension does move forward. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. We get that goosebumps are a ghost being near you. I had heard that one. This yeah. this was the one I think someone in the crew, I'm gonna go ahead and say Katie, the 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 PA who did the Stop. voice. <laughs> Caitlin, the PA who did the voice. They were like, you know that thing where you're in a room and then everything feels familiar? I feel like someone was like, Do you mean deja vu? And they were like, What the fuck is that? And she was like, Nothing, never mind. <laughs> no, they, whatever that is. They will no. constantly describe they will multiple times in this movie describe deja vu without someone going, Do you mean deja vu? Yes. If they had said that, they would have had one French phrase correct in the entire movie, and that would have <laughs> fucked up their thing. But Michelle, Michelle's a skeptic, right? She says to do your research on deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> and then Edward tells his story. Okay. Okay, this is the best. When Eddie, they, they all tell stories that Eddie's like, I saw a really big guy once. And everybody's like, oh, are you done with your, That's thanks, Eddie. And he's like, yep. Thanks, Eddie, dog. You're, you're here too, bud. Uh-huh. <laughs> They say that. They're like, hey, did you have a second half of that story? He's like, absolutely not. I just saw a large man once. They're like, well, maybe he was going to rape you. And they do like a freeze frame laugh. They're like, ah, ha, 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 friendship. Eddie is merely there to later on in the movie do the most insane thing I've ever seen anyone It's fucking do. incredible. Yes. It's incredible. Yes. I think maybe Eddie didn't know he was an actor in a movie. Like he was just genuinely <laughs> hanging out with people and he was like, you guys have some weird lamps in your house. And they're like, those are cameras. And he's like, cameras, lamps. <laughs> I'm a locksmith. <laughs> he is a locksmith. <laughs> Speaking of lamps, one falls over outside. So of course, Michelle has to go check it out by herself. Mm-hmm. She goes over to the lamp and then this is so funny so this is classic pop scare in horror movies right someone goes and fixes the thing and then like out of the corner of your eye you spy it and I think that's what the movie was going for and then they realized we couldn't see it so we have to watch them 
slowly zoom in and be like, the, the ghost is there. The ghost is o- over there. Guys, there. There's an old lady. In the we could, we Did could you see the old lady. We couldn't get it in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> and then her friends pop scare her when she gets back in for the cheesy poofs. Yeah, I kind of like the touch of everyone being gone when she gets back and that the, the bowl is just rattling around on the table. She sits down, does not give a shit that no one is there. And then they all drinking. pop out and scare her. But the table was in the middle of the room. What? Where did they come from? Where did they go? She's a scientist. So she comes back and she's just like, oh, that's just fucking bowl pareidolia and everybody disappeared. Or I'm an atheist. It's fine. There's and then no they're such- like, ah, just fucking. With you. I can't see those people. They must never have existed. All right. More, more lowbrow beer for me. Now we're going to cut to her and French friend. They're doing homework together. They have some homework banter. And then again, because there are only three conversations in the entire film, she's going to bring up to French friend that there's an, again, she does not say I saw a ghost or I don't know what she saw. She says, this old lady keeps dropping (laughs) by my house. (laughs) And again, and Alan teased this earlier. This is where the French friend points out that there couldn't be any homeless people because there's a golf course nearby and they keep it really nice. She knows a lot about property. Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, there's this fucking crazy moment, right? Where she looks down. I don't know what this was supposed to be. She looks down at her homework and she says, before the calm comes the storm, Yes, which yeah. does that mean? Which would be bizarre enough, but then Michelle is like, stop saying scary words right fucking now. Don't you ever <laughs> fucking say scary words again. She's like, it's just what's in our homework. And she's like, oh, okay. Okay, but why would French <laughs> homework have the phrase before the calm comes the storm in it? She was doing a uh, a French essay on QAnon. <laughs> <laughs> But then she says, I know a person who's into ancient witchery. Yep. (laughs) Ancient witchery. I know an ancient witch. If you would like to call the ancient witch, here's the ancient witch's cell phone number. (laughs) Get her on the blower. Okay. All right. I think it's time to talk at least in part about spoilers for this movie because I think it's going to really help us break down what's going on here. You guys ready to crack this baby wide open or should we save it? No, no. crack it open. Okay, let's crack it open. Okay. Hmm. The ancient witch that the French friend knows, that the friend who is studying French knows, <laughs> is the college admissions counselor, who is, in fact, uh-huh. not a college admissions counselor. Mm-hmm. She is a distant relative of the Russian girls seeking vengeance for the murder of her distant relatives. So is part of her vengeance plan befriending a French major at a local university, hoping that, yes. that the person she is invited to the college will eventually be referred to her for ancient witch advice. She has an office on campus and does get Michelle registered for her classes. She does. Yeah, I think she actually is a faculty member at the University of Minnesota as part of her plan too. No, No. she's not. That's There's a whole part of that in the twist. We'll get to that when we get to it, but she's not. She's just a lady. The letter. The letter. Yeah, it says in the letter. I think the letter was saying that like a false letter got sent, but she could be an actual faculty member who sent oh, a letter that you wasn't think she's just yes, like it says like it says this has been addressed with Ms. Lawrence <gasps> on the letter. Oh. Yeah. So I think she got fired for this. She's like exactly. an adjunct in the English department who just wrote this random girl. Okay. This is like yeah. an eight decade long con. It's a, it's a yeah. really really long con. She's like a demon and she went and studied like university administration and she got the job (laughs) and she befriended eventually a student of French who knows. Yeah, it's a whole thing. As a character, like as a bit in character, she befriended a student of French in case she would later get referred to. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. All right. Okay. Now we have a club scene. Oh, God. Um, (laughs) I was very upset by pretty much everything happening here. As an old man, I love the volume of the music in the club. It was nice and low. Mm -hmm. I could hear all the conversation. (laughs) I thought it was respectful. Yeah, exactly. Where where are the clubs for the old people like us with just, you know, lo-fi beats going on in the background? (laughs) I will say the man who approaches the table and dances with her and then is never acknowledged again. So this is what happens, right? They're in the middle of a banter. They're not really talking about anything. It's the same fucking conversation about I have a, a spooky house, right? 
But in the middle of it, a gentleman walks up and is like, hello today, do you own her? And the guy's like, yes, I do. And he's like, no, you don't. So while the conversation continues, they go apparently have a full dance and then she comes back and just picks up the conversation where it left off like nothing happens. <laughs> she's she's like, well, we see them dancing in the background. She's arms around the neck, full on grinding on him. And then it's just right back to the table. He's not my type. Yep. <laughs> But what the friend says, live it up. It's Minnesota. These things are all right. You know, <laughs> land of a thousand lakes and land of a thousand fucks. What they don't tell you is that most of those lakes are wet pussies. That's right. <laughs> Good Lord. What? Land of a thousand they wet pussies. That That's what they were originally. Look, Katie says it and it's on her Facebook status right now. Minnesota <laughs> is the land of a thousand wet pussies. And I love cops. <laughs> I love cops. And they're all wet for cops. I, I've also never been out with someone who's ordered a daiquiri. And I was like, okay, that thank you. What the <laughs> fuck was that? So Michelle's like, I'll have a Coke. She's being responsible. And then one of the guys in the group is like, I'll have a strawberry daiquiri. And I wanted so bad for this server to be like, okay, and come back with a giant frozen strawberry daiquiri with 19 garnishes, way too big to be holding on a dance floor. So ridiculous of an Why order. would a nightclub do daiquiris of all things? <laughs> or at least the server would be like, fuck you. Yeah. We're not getting a blender out yeah. right now. Absolutely gonna, not. I'm not making it out of rocks either. We're going to blender and then we're going to fucking salt the rim and put in the fucking donut and no, pineapple. No, actually like sugar on the rim. Go. Fuck yourself. Absolutely not. <laughs> he, he might as well have been like, oh, uh, yeah, the lady will have a rum and coke and I will have a turkey dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to need clam casino. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, then Lord. they head back to friend's house to party some more. Now it's time for staring hood lady to <laughs> have a conversation <laughs> with mom. So mom opens the door that night Good Lord. and staring hood lady is there. And she's like, okay, well you can't just stare at me now because you're the only person here. And she's like, hi, how's it going? She's like, may I come in? No, the fuck you may not. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Can I add to my theory right here? Sure. Yeah. Yes. So she says, how's your father? As if to, you know, know the person somehow ahead of time. And then, Mom, Michelle's mom says, how's old man Wilson? As if she knows the staring hood lady and knows that staring hood lady knows somebody named old man Wilson. Yes, right? but she doesn't because she, she doesn't. says who? She says who? She, she says who? <laughs> she literally no buts your theory. She's like, no, oh, how, why would you say any? Why would you say how's your father? It doesn't make it. They know each other. They, I'm sure. <laughs> they don't. They don't know each other. You can, at least other. Assume, you can assume someone has or had a father. <laughs> and old man Wilson is not standard issue. <laughs> so she says, why have you come? Right. And she says, okay. She says, <laughs> why were you staring at me like that in church? Great question. And she says, yeah. you had a goat, the severed head of a goat on top of your head. And then we get a flashback to that uh, where they have very clearly actually put a bloody goat mask on this actress's head. Uh, Keith has shared a picture of it in our notes. And Tim, I, so good. with my whole heart, I want to recommend Tim share this out on our social media. <laughs> yes. I would give any amount of money, any amount of money to have been there the day when they were like, okay, so now we... um. Now we're going to put this bloody goat mask on you, please. <laughs> the look on the other woman's face in the photo is actually the best it's part the of best. it. Yes. She's like, not my head. <laughs> She's so happy to be there. You going to put this on the Instagram? <laughs> She's just like, YOLO, selfie of the goat bloody yep. head. Right? If what? you ever see me smiling in a picture of Heath, it's because he's in an uncomfortable situation. That is the facial expression <laughs> that this woman has. She's like, oh my God, they put a big fucking wet goat head on Mary and she's so mad under the... She's furious. I can taste her rage through my computer screen. And then birds fly in. And then birds fly in. Yes, you know, she goes, someone in your family is about to be cut off. Burn, cut and birds. off. Yeah. Lance yeah. Burton style. <laughs> so now we're going to get Edward's incredible choice. Uh, Alan teased this earlier. Mm. Alan 
is breaking in. Edward. Edward. Not Al. Stop <laughs> making us the villains of this movie. Look, I gotta, I, look, I gotta cast dispersions where I can, okay? Edward <laughs> is breaking into Michelle's house to take a bath? To take a bath. This yep. old timey Victorian house has a nice jacuzzi. I mean, yeah, it's a really it's nice bathroom does have and a nice, nice jacuzzi. Yeah, like he's a locksmith. I guess that's a good use of your skills. Sneak in. You're not doing much harm to anybody. You're just using the nice bath. But he knows they're not there. He knows they're at Tammy's. Yeah, so that's he, he literally just bath. wanted to take a bath. Yeah. He's not even Jay Owen. He's a bath guy. He's a bath guy. <laughs> he's going to go in there and be like some kind of sex fest. Yeah. But instead, he's just like, no, I'm just going to go take a bath. Yeah. I was like, where's your scented candles, Edward? What are you doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The most baffling thing about this is that Michelle comes back to her apartment and doesn't notice that he's in her bathtub. Yeah. She goes to bed. Like, did she not pee before going to bed? No. After drinking all that, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to get one of my favorite gross out bits I've ever seen in horror cinema. And I want to point out, like I have seen almost every movie in the encyclopedia psychotronica. Very few th things have made me laugh harder than the scene she walks across. So she hears a rhythmic thumping, right? She wakes up, <laughs> she goes and follows it. And it's the old lady. You know the old lady she's been sort of seeing as a pop scare. The old lady is just, stabbing herself in her hand <laughs> and they zoom in on it and it's very clearly a fake rubber hand and this actress is just stabbing away and you can see she's like doing it sarcastically she's like I'm sorry is this the scary thing that's happening in the movie yeah just like tap 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 right like the thing from aliens but I'm hitting my hand each time huh? <laughs> but I lose all the time I have to tell you guys that this is better than many many things we've seen in the movies we've covered no I was like oh look at that that's kind of classic I like yeah. that. Yeah. I also like that the noise she's making just sounds like the washing machine is like uneven. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. The boom, the boom, the boom. Which she hears and wakes her up. Edward does not hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. But she doesn't actually wake up. Oh, right. It's a dream. It was a dream. It was a dream. And then, of course, <laughs> Edward's in the bath and he gets pop scared as well. Right. <laughs> Yeah, she wants to jacuzzi too. You yeah. can't blame her for that. <laughs> yeah. So Edward actually gets attacked. Michelle, it was just a nightmare. So apparently the demon lady did a nightmare fake out on Michelle, like as a diversion. So she can then, I guess, flirt with the beautiful naked man in the bathtub. And <laughs> that went badly. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. No, we actually won't. But first, <laughs> let me give Act 3 the hard sell. What was that? Did you hear something? Is the movie going to start? No. Find out that no, not for a fucking while. When we return for the remaining tastic conclusion of Matthew 18. What do you want from me, spirit? Get out. Got him. Uh, Kevin, what are you doing? Yeah, what the hell, man? I shot the ghost in the face. Yeah, I noticed. Why would you try to shoot a ghost? She's already dead. Already dead. Thank you. I don't know. Uh, maybe you can shoot him. I don't know until you try. You don't know, Kevin. Do you not know? I, I was trying to help. Well, now I feel like an idiot in front of an undead spirit. It's fine. No, honestly, I, I tell you what. Why don't we just scrap tonight? We'll do tomorrow. You come. You do some banging. I'll follow with just a flashlight. And nobody will have a gun. Okay? Okay. Again, I am so sorry about this. It's okay. Where'd you even get a gun? Oh, we're in Minnesota. Everyone's got a gun. Yeah, that's fair. Get out. I said tomorrow. Sorry, sorry. And we're back. When we left off, Edward had the worst b and &E bath time of his career. <laughs> he got attacked by a ghost, and then apparently we're going to learn he just jumped out of the bath naked, <laughs> ran outside, and got arrested right away. Yeah. So, real bad experience with that. And now... We cut to the next morning, and Michelle gets a call from her mom. Mom had a premonition. Yeah. Did she say she had a nightmare about a non-binary person chasing her, or was that just supposed to be mysterious language? <laughs> yes. She's like, I couldn't tell if they were male or female. Like, that's very frightening to her. Yeah. Also, mom... Maybe the dream comes after you tell me grandpa's health status. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which is grandpa, yes. grandpa's dying. <laughs> she, she does grandpa dying as an afterthought. She's like, yeah, so, and then, you know, my third grade teacher was there. Anyways, it was weird. 
Oh, your grandpa's not long for this world also. He's die. He'll be dead any second. One of your legs was a telephone. Anyway, grandpa's dying. Yeah. <laughs> Strange moment. Which she blames on Michelle being in Minneapolis. She's like, I have a bad feeling about this whole Minneapolis situation. Like you're killing your grandfather. Yeah. And and Michelle it says, no, he was fine. And I was like, he wasn't fine. He, he was wasn't. apparently paralyzed from a stroke and unable to speak last time you saw him. And he's elderly and that was weeks ago? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure that he knew he was in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we cut back to the house. Uh, Mrs. Hillshire snooping. She snoops on some mail. This is the letter we talked about before. We'll talk about it again. That's a federal crime. It is. She, yes, She just you. rips the envelope and everything. She's not even secretive about it. Yeah, it's not even it. snooping. Just She's just opening it. mail. <laughs> Open and shut case. But Michelle goes to church and she uh, she prays that God not take her grandpa. Sure. Right? Yeah, that's the one. And now this is very confusing. Okay. And again, I'm going to crack this one wide open because I need your help. I need your guidance. And I will, all I have is Heath over here telling me that hood lady and mom <laughs> went to high school together. So it's very confusing when for all of us. They, they don't know each other. They definitely they each other. didn't know each other. How dare you? They were just speaking cryptically past each other by chance. <laughs> okay. So now Snoopy lady goes into the basement and she gets killed by the ghost, right? Uh-huh. With a hammer. Yeah. 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 But she also shows up at the door at the end of the movie. I don't know what that was meant to be. Okay. Okay. You got a, You got an idea? Okay. So she gets hit like in the neck here with a hammer. Yeah. And then later in the movie, we see her with a neck wound. So I guess maybe she didn't get all the way killed. Maybe. So the, on, the only thing I can think, to, would you like my theory about that right now? Please, we, okay. Alan, save me. Does it explain how they knew each other? The staring lady and Does the it mom? Maybe <laughs> the, there's the, the hood lady and her met at the yes, earthquake shelter? She is... She is Mr. Wilson that was being asked about her. No. Yes! <laughs> she goes to the, the, the house party at the end of the movie, and there's a long lingering shot on the two Russian women from the beginning of the movie and the small child. I their think, their and, daughter. Their daughter, <laughs> who was with them. And then the lingering shot, and it's focused on the daughter, and then the door opens, and it's that older woman. And I was like, oh, is she the daughter? Which, yes, is a good theory. Mm. Yeah. Except that the witch is going by the name Angelica, which is the name of the daughter. Yeah. I don't... I can only have one theory. I can't <laughs> There's the witch only one this. theory. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she... White lady gets killed. Mrs. Hillshire gets killed. Then we get my favorite scene in the film. Just got to shout it out. Lifton. We haven't watched Lifton experience anything except the kitchen knife, but Lifton is fucking out of here. Yeah. And so we will spend a four minute hilarious scene where Lifton is just like, yeah, I'm leaving. Let's fucking get out of here. And she's like, well, I don't, she's acting like a horror movie protagonist, right? She's like, well, I don't know. Maybe. And he's like, nope, we should leave. We should leave. We should leave now. We should leave now. He just keeps yelling follow suit to her. He has a catchphrase. It's follow, follow suit. suit. <laughs> I love this emphasis on suit. Yeah, and then he drives away. And he is gone from the movie. Exit lift in. <laughs> so good. He away, leaving a box that fell off the top of his car behind. <laughs> Exit lift in, pursued by a bear. I think Face on Love was like, look, I got a con that I'm getting to. There's a big worm appearance. So I'll see you guys <laughs> yeah. later. Okay. Now, her friend Tammy shows up, right? The one that she met in the bookstore earlier. And she's... Yeah she is going to break the news to us about Edward. Remember how he <laughs> told you when we first came back from the commercial that Edward didn't actually die from the ghost lady's pop scare. He just ran into like the road and was found naked. Tammy thinks that is a sign that he was cheating on her with Michelle. Uh -huh. Yeah, Tam Tammy sees Edward's boxers and because he took them off to get into the bath and they're still there. Right, which would, Michelle had found earlier and was like, huh. What do you know? Anyway, she must still have not gone to the bathroom in the morning because she would have seen her bathtub all full. What is wrong? I'm worried about her. <laughs> She's got a blockage. Yeah. Maybe he drained the tub and then ran away from ghost. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Responsibly. No, he's beaten cheeks, buck ass naked. And yeah, dripping. he is. I wouldn't call it indecent. <laughs> <laughs> that was decent exposure. Was that was decent, decent exposure. Very that was, that decent was exposure. Enjoyable exposure. <laughs> so she's like, okay. They're in the middle of this argument, right? Like, it's a full-on drama scene where she's like, oh, don't lie to me. And she's like, I wouldn't lie to you. We're better friends. And then the ghost interrupts them to be like, hey, guy, I'm sorry. I don't want to cause you guys to fight. I'm here to kill you both. 
<laughs> Tammy right. says, how come every time I fucking come over here, something is falling? Which is, I'm sorry, the greatest line in these red horror movies. Incredible. I cackled. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. <laughs> Can you just put your lamps on like flat stuff? It's crazy here. <laughs> Too many angles. But yeah, the ghost shows up and she's like, ah. And they're like, oh, never mind. We're not fighting anymore. It was a ghost the whole time. And they run away from the ghost. What the fudge? So now they're driving away, right? They're driving away and they're trying to discuss what to do about the ghost. Michelle is still talking about it. Even though she saw the old lady like stomping her hand with a knife, even though she knows that it gets scared Edward, like all this mysterious supernatural stuff is happening. She is still talking about it like it's a homeless person who wanders in. She wants to get police protection against the ghost. Yeah, she's still talking about like ghost knife pareidolia, like it's like a science thing. But then she's like, wait, 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 wait. It's probably racist Mrs. Hillshire trying to make me leave the house. And then right in the middle of that thought, she's like, wait again. Hold on. My French major friend knows a witch demon expert. Let's figure it out with that. Yes. She went from that woman being a practitioner of ancient witchery to... Oh, yeah, my friend is a medieval instructor. And I was like, yeah. listen, if you're drunk and can't remember words, you have to stop the scene. <laughs> you have to stop the scene and get on our podcast, damn it. So now it's time to head over to Witch Lady. Again, we have spoiled this, but Witch Lady is the college counselor who is Angelica, who was the mm -hmm. sister of the two Russian ladies who got murdered. The little kid of one of them. Right. She's the little kid of one of the Russian ladies who got murdered. The times don't work out. The ages don't work out. She is in this scene dressed in all these weird prosthetics Yep. so that it won't ruin that for us. But like, I want you to imagine, you know those Mission Impossible scenes where they pull off the face mask and it's like, <laughs> oh, I was Tom Cruise the whole time. I want you to imagine if all those scenes were just Tom Cruise with like, uh, like a, a Halloween adventure Chucky mask on <laughs> of whoever it was. Cause she's just, I spent the whole scene being like, what is on this actor's face? Why is she's, this actor dressed like this? She's so wet. Who is this actor supposed to be? Why is she so wet? So wet. Her eyebrows were so like dripping with moisture. And I was like, what? They shaved is a part. They were like, hey, we don't want anyone to know it's you. So they shaved off her eyebrows <laughs> and painted eyebrows about three inches up on her forehead. Yeah, 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 yeah. From real Kim Novak shit. Yeah. <laughs> For all you young heads out there. Yeah. <laughs> Alan just turned 50. <laughs> <laughs> so they're talking to the witch lady, right? And the witch lady is supposed to be doing like mysterious speech here, right? She says, the ghost will exist until the conflict is resolved, but perhaps it wants it to be absolved. And nobody corrects her and says absolved. They spend the rest of the scene being like, <laughs> how do you think they'll try to absolve this problem? <laughs> well, there are many ways in which it can be absolved. It's insane. <laughs> Meanwhile, Julia, who's the French student, is just trying to shoehorn the phrase mad scramble back into the Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was a mad scramble. They're doing a mad scramble. Mad, scramble. mad scramble. Was yes. she getting paid by the mad scramble? I think she might have been getting paid by the mad Lifted scramble. Lifton was allowed to say follow suit like 19 times. I'm getting my own catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> also, in this scene, uh, Michelle refers to Mrs. Hillshire as a witch. And I was like, maybe read the room and don't use that term derogatorily yes. when you're meeting with a fucking witch <laughs> who's helping you for free. Oh, I thought you were just a medieval instructor. Forgive me. Oh, right. <laughs> so she finishes this big dramatic monologue about ghosts and they'll remove the absolve with death. And then when I say remove, I mean death. Yes. Right. Literal, literal line. She says, and when I say remove it, I mean death. And I wrote in my notes, comedy fails me. There's no, I can, all I can do is just tell the audience <laughs> someone wrote that line and a different person said it. But Michelle is still an atheist now. She's like, okay, at the end of this, there's no ghosts or spirits hunting people. This was dumb. And they leave. And then Julia has to be like, hey, thanks for doing this, Angelica. Sorry about <laughs> fucking atheist science nerd. I know you uh, <laughs> set up all these candles and everything. It's feeling like every <laughs> you did your, your face moisturizing before. We did <laughs> you take Venmo? <laughs> Only medieval currency. <laughs> So she goes to see Aunt Debbie. We don't see that, but now Michelle has a gun. All, the only Jesse. Jesse, you're right. She goes to see Aunt Jesse, but now Michelle has a gun. I don't 
like the disappointed tone okay. with which you guys correct me for not remembering Aunt Jessie's name. She's one of the two good characters in this movie. <laughs> Lifton and Jessie. Yeah, I notice you're getting Lifton correct. This is episode 451, okay? <laughs> <laughs> there have been a lot of ants. Okay, but the way that we know Michelle has the gun is the best because we just get a, a shot of Michelle and then she pulls a gun out of her bag and she's like, look at this gun that I have. Huh. And then puts it back in her bag and then they cut again. Put it back. So, just so we know she's got it. Does she even use the gun? No. Never. Why would she? Wow. It's Michael Chekhov's gun. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> she does immediately find a bloody deed to the house, though, just on a shelf. Yep, she does. And she leaves it there. She doesn't take it for further it's examination. Not, she does get on out yeah. of there. Yeah. So now she goes upstairs and Angelica, which lady is here, and she is going to give us the big reveal, right? The big oh, reveal, which will be told through flashbacks is, and please step in and correct me if I am not telling this fucking insane twist correctly. The Russian, because there was a mad scramble for houses in the area. Mad scramble, mad scramble. The Russians Follow suit. bought the house. Random white guy. Hey, podcast this. Remember we were like, hey, a guy's going to sit next to another guy in a church at the fucking very beginning of this podcast. That guy didn't want them to own the house. Did he also buy it? Did he own it beforehand? He sold it to the Russian ladies yeah, apparently. and then also didn't want them to buy. He got mad after they paid him for the house. Yes. I think he got foreclosed on because they said it was during the depression. I think oh. that he, the bank took the house and they bought it from the bank and he was like, no, it's been in my family for generations. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. There's a one thing that makes sense. No, thank you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. at the bank then, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Anyways, so that happened and then he murdered the two Russian sisters? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the help of Michelle's great-grandfather also. Right. With uh -huh. the Michelle of his best friend, Michelle's great-grandfather. And he was like, hey, I have this blood-spattered deed. Do you just want to go splitsies on the house? <laughs> <laughs> we now flash forward to the present where Angelica, the psychic medium witch, pulls off her Tom Cruise mask and it <laughs> reveals herself to be the college advisor. So good. I like that she shows up and she does like a pop scare show up and then she's like, sorry, I, I showed up like a pop scare demon. I need to work on that because like, you know, I was like a witch earlier and that would be scary. But I actually am the bad guy. And then she pulls the mask off. Yes. Okay. So now we cut over to mom, Michelle's mom, hoodie lady who does not know her is back. <laughs> Mr. Wilson's friend. They seem very well acquainted. Old man Wilson. <laughs> Old man Wilson, please, sorry. They had several like inside jokes that didn't even make sense <laughs> to me, but like they know each other. <laughs> and she's like, it's your daughter. She's in danger. Right? Let's shake this table together. They shake <laughs> right. a table together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? And they're, okay. Again, I want to be corrected if I'm incorrect. Their Matthew 18 table shaking results in the police showing up uh -huh. to shoot yep. Angelica, who's the granddaughter or the daughter of the Russian ladies who had their house stolen by the guy who knew her great-grandfather's father just and in time. Tracks. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. That's precise. After Angelica has said, <laughs> when she say oh, that the goat was sacrificed for the sins of its people? Like the goat was like, you know what, guys, I'm going to take this one. Yes. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the line that this actress does, and it's so good. She literally says, you're the goat. You're, you're the, the goat. goat. You're the goat. <laughs> and then the cops shoot her. Yeah. Yeah. It's her final line in the movie. She, before that, though, she says, the university didn't recruit you. It was me who yes. recruited you. Which right. I just, it was I, just, I who recruited you. Said, yeah. Right. And then is that when we cut back to the letter? <laughs> yes, we come back to the letter. Right. We see that she's $12,000 in debt. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need you to pay that $12,000. <laughs> Another letter being like, yeah, Joe Biden's thing got canceled. You actually do owe us a whole bunch of money for the fake college <laughs> loan that you got. What are you going to do? And it, it somehow ended with, thanks, Obama. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> so now we cut outside, right? The police have murdered that lady, Yep. right? And she's like, oh, you guys must have been here because of my Aunt Debbie. Did my Aunt, my Aunt Jessie. You guys must have been here because my Aunt Jessie called the cops. And they're like, no, no. I knew your Aunt Jessie. <laughs> She's been dead for months. And then we get a flashback to her dying. <laughs> they actually do the like, hasn't been alive for three 
months. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the way that she dies is she's driving fairly slowly through a suburban neighborhood and the ghost appears in her passenger seat and she drives off the road. Yep. Yeah, that was... <laughs> That was the ghost demon's plan to just be like, I'll probably just pop up while she's driving on a, well, yeah, residential street. I guess yeah. that's not great. There might be. You know what they say? I, I'm just, it's too late. It's too 35 late. miles an hour over and it's a deadly speed. I've been doing lamp stuff this whole time. I wanted to just do something a little different. <laughs> <laughs> then we hear the, remember the waitress who they were rude to who said even the dead were real and then was like riddles, riddles. We hear that again for no reason. Why? <laughs> because Aunt Jessie was dead and she was real. That's right. Think about right. it, won't you? Get it together. <laughs> now we cut back to the plane. The stewardess recognizes oh, her. She's like, Michelle, right? How you doing? Going back so soon. You failed out of school, didn't you, you dummy? <laughs> right. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going home. Someone tried to sacrifice me while dressed as my college counselor. And she literally says, the old story, there are ghosts in Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> also, the guy behind her on the plane is reading Matthew 18 in his Bible. Yeah. Yeah. In case you fucking morons didn't understand why this movie was named this. Look at here. <laughs> I wanted that guy to like have something useful just to be like, hey, by any chance, you in front of me, are you in like a demon scenario? Because I'm in I'm reading Matthew 18. And, and it feels very apropos to what's going on for you. Your mom and a friend of hers from a you know a long time ago that they've known a long time. They should probably get together and pray for you, and that would save it, right? Okay. Oh, and there's a ghost on the plane. This is the best. Now we cut to Russian people. We know they're Russian because they have the Russian nesting dolls. And, and yes. because the Tetris theme is playing. <laughs> yes. And the Tetris theme is playing. <laughs> the establishing shot of nesting dolls is the best they could think of. Yeah. Just like pierogies. That's Russia. Russia. <laughs> Destroying right? Americans' elections. <laughs> Colonium Adams. No. But it's such, it's such a long shot. We watch this woman walk through the party, stop, and have a full fucking conversation in silence, we right? Can't hear. We can't hear what they're saying. She's just doing the like, because it's an establishing shot, but it's 97 minutes long. And then she opens the door and Mrs. Hillshire, who we thought was killed in an earlier scene, is standing on the doorstep. Why? I have no idea. Are they the family of the... Russian girls who were killed? I'm your grandma now, dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> so I, at, at this point in the movie, I literally wrote, is this a video of someone's wedding that just got recorded over for the movie? <laughs> it's so long. I thought my browser stopped working and like the audio had cut out or something. Because we watch, I'm going to say, conservatively, three minutes of silent Russian house party. So Mixing. That's it. Just mingling, just having a lovely time. Okay, so then, the final shot of the movie, we cut back to Michelle on the plane, we pan up, and Ghost Lady is just sitting behind her on the plane. But I want to be clear, she's not floating, she's not mysteriously sitting, she's just also on the plane. <laughs> she's got a seat in coach. In coach, <laughs> yes. You're a demon? You can't, like, work out some way to get the money for first class, maybe? You're not doing anything from there. Hover above the seat. Those are so expensive. <laughs> That's my <my> arrest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch a Minions movie. They always have all the Minions movies available. <laughs> I love that Gargamel looking guy. <laughs> okay, what did that mean? So before we close it out, does anyone have any idea what that meant? What did we learn about demons? What did the movie think happened in their movie at the end? Yes. Never trust a college scholarship. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. pretty yeah. good advice, actually. There you go. Yeah. My last note was just, oh, Roy. <laughs> oh yeah Roy Belfry had his fingers all over this held it no I, I I don't I there's no moral to this movie no I don't know who was right and who was wrong I guess let the staring lady in yeah let, yeah let what the you right want to do is have a mom who knows a staring lady who knows some Christianity incredibly magic. well they're very her. close yeah church together probably yeah exactly my favorite thing about the end of this movie was that at the end of the credits it was a Bats and Belfry Productions and oh. Productions was spelled wrong. Yep, sure was. <laughs> sure was. What was it, Productions? I was in the wrong place, I think. 
<laughs> Productiones. <laughs> Perfect ending. Oh, All right. <laughs> that's going to do it for Matthew 18. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie for next week. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath, as we eagerly await the release of Plandemic the Musical, I realized that we were still one Plandemic movie behind. So we'll be getting caught up with Plandemic 3, The Great Awakening. Lovely. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 451 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Katie and Alan for joining us. Thank you for having us. Very much appreciate it. And in case anyone's new, where can people go to hear more from you? If you just search Werewolf Ambulance in any of your pod catchers out there, your podcast listening apps were on there. Um, we are lightly on social media, but not so much anymore. Uh, you can email us at werewolfambulance at gmail.com. Fantastic. And uh, yeah. And you can learn all about the best and worst horror movies of all time on Werewolf Ambulance. Heck very, yeah, you can. Very fun Thanks show. so much for having us, guys. Yeah. This is always such a delight. Pleasure having you be here. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Katie Allen and Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you at the Animal House close. Michelle just pays the $12,000 to go to the University of Minnesota like a regular ass person. <laughs> the ghost ladies start a Ghost Were People too campaign for ghostly property rights. <laughs> <laughs> a demon ate Lifton's microwave meat sandwich. It was bad. It was a bad sandwich. <laughs> Dead Lady Airplane Ghost did too order a vegetarian meal. They just forgot to put it on the plane. <laughs> Should have bought the tapas box. <laughs> <laughs>